Hi. Well, the reason I'm here is because of this magnificent lady who seems to serve our community in so many ways. Um, every time you turn up at a, at a, at a worthy event uh, with, uh, with either a charitable dimension or with a, a motivation to, uh, to help somebody in the community or, or community organizations themselves, you'll find this, uh, this lady, Marlene Gallio. And I'm out here today to, uh, to say that this new foundation, the Ricky Foundation, uh, is one that's uh, worthy of support both for the good that it does uh, right here in Markham, in, in York Region, and also what it does um, for, um, for the folks who need uh, help back in that's India. Great. So it's, uh, you, it's an honor to be here and thank you, know, you, Peter. Thank, thank you, you. Thank for you everything so you do, Marlene. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, I just got off a plane from England, and uh, you know, I thought it was Elton John. I should come here and and uh, to the Ricky Wish Foundation that this Marlene Gallant's putting on, because it's such an important function, you know. Um, I want to thank Regional <laughs> Councillor Gordon Landon. Unbelievable, always there to support me. Wonderful outfit, God. I think you are the best dressed today. <laughs> thank you, God. <laughs>
This is Bob Soroy. I got a call a couple of weeks ago to come and attend this function and for the good cause. And I hope uh, everybody supports my friend here. Thank you very much. I'm, uh, I'm here for Marlene. Because uh, Marlene, I, I know Marlene is a very hard worker in her community. And uh, I'm also here to help in the fundraising for her brother on, at the Ricky Wish Foundation. And uh, to be frank with you, anything that Marlene does, I support. And I, she invites me or calls me to buy tickets, I'm here. Thank you. So I'm just here to support Marlene in any way we can. Uh, supporting the Ricky Wish Foundation is an important thing to do and anything we can do to help always is a great thing. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Hi. I'm here tonight to support Marlene with the great fundraising for her late brother Ricky. I think it's a worthwhile cause to do uh, good work over in India for the children. So I, I know it's been a, a long time coming for Marlene and I wish her all the best in this first annual, hopefully, gala for uh, Ricky. Thank you. And I would like to support her charity and I hope she'll make it a great success. And uh, we all would be uh, present here for that purpose. Thank you. I am Chandra. Uh, I am here to support Marlene. Uh. Hello, this is Dorothy. I want to wish Marlene every success for her event and her hard effort to save, uh, to make a difference in the lives of the children that's in the charity. Thank you so much. I'm here supporting Marlene because she's doing wonderful work with these children's organizations. I also am uh, the director of the Cabbage Town Classical Youth Choir, which is made up of a lot of underprivileged youth. So essentially, we're in the same business, helping kids. I'm glad to be here, and thank you so much. Hi, my name is Sabrina Kogan. I want to thank Marlene for the fantastic job she's doing to raise awareness and also provide um, financial opportunities for orphans, for children in need, as well as for bringing people together. I want to thank her for the great job she's doing again. Thank you, Marlene, and we love you. Hi, my name is Carol Armstrong. And I'm with Granny's Pantry and Learning Skills Program in the northern part of Scarborough. This evening is all about Ricky's Wish Foundation in memory of Marlene Gallio's brother and sister-in-law. But I network with Marlene uh, in the community along with a lot of other community programs because sharing and caring is what makes everything grow and which, what, which helps the people that are in need of which there are a lot these days because of the social environment. Uh, and we hope to have a great time and wish you were here. It's, it's my pleasure to be here tonight. And uh, I know Marlene for a few years. She's a wonderful lady, and uh, she's always so nice and kind, and a strong woman. And uh, she has been doing wonderful things for, for the society for, for, for many years. And uh, she's always so helpful. So I, I wish she has a wonderful event tonight. And, uh, Hope everybody enjoy it. Thank you. I'm here because of uh, this is a great cause for the for the community and also is a Ricky uh, Wish Foundation uh, doing this one. Uh, Ricky Wish Foundation is run by the Marlin Calliard, is uh, the founder, and he is doing this uh, charity fundraising on on the memory of his brother. This is uh, showing the humanity is all about. If you leave out of out the humanity, out of our life, we will be a become an animal. And uh, this is showing how we are. The, the, the Ricky Foundation is uh, committed to raising funds and giving back to the community and looking down the vulnerable people. In not only is a Markham, is in the abroad as well. And I had to thank you to the Marlin Calliard and Ricky Foundation as doing a wonderful job for the humanity. That's the reason I am here.
So, please enjoy Samsung tonight. As I said before, there's a silent auction and there are volunteers going around selling raffle tickets. Do open up your, your wallets and uh, be generous. I won't take much of your time, but I just want to introduce a couple of dignitaries. Thank you. Next we have <clears throat> Mark and Regional Councillor Gordon Langdon. Thank you, John. Well done. We also have Mark and Ward Councillor Logan Kanapati. Taylor of the town of Markham. We have Patrick O'Hanlon from the Angus. I'm here today from, I just flew in from England, you know, and, uh, <laughs> I see things through rosy glasses. <laughs> but the mayor uh, has a problem seeing, you know, and so he goes and buys glasses in the, in the uh, he goes around and buys his uh, glasses in every store, and he tries them on, and, and he takes them off, and, and he can't see. So, anyway, I can't read this without my uh, these glasses on, so I'm gonna have to put my oh, I have to put my other glasses on. Okay. <laughs> when the mayor uh, indicated to me that he wasn't going to be able to be here tonight, he said I had to get dressed up, and they said, "Well, that's my normal thing that when I come." To Marlene's events, I always get dressed up, and he said, well, make sure you do a good job. And I said, Frank, you've never come and seen what I really look like. And uh, so we'll send him some pictures of this one tonight. But uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce the members of council that are here. We have uh, Regional Councilor Joe Lee. Joe, do you want to just stand up and uh, I'll acknowledge you? And our Councilor Logan Canapathy is here. And our CAO from the town of Markham, Andy Campbell, is here as well. And I know that you've had other dignitaries that have been introduced, and it's pretty good to see Rob Bruce here again. He's, uh, he's been sort of our police chief for so long, but now we have a new one because he's gone and he's found a better job. But anyway. Anyway, uh, Mayor Frank Scarpetti asked me to read his. Uh, letter that he was going to present tonight if he could be here. On behalf of the members of council in the town of Markham, I'm pleased to extend a warm and sincere welcome to all those attending the Ricky Wish Found Foundation fundraising Halloween gala hosted by Marlene Gallup. The spirit that built our community is reflected in the residents who devote their best efforts to make our global community a better place. I commend Marlene for organizing a special Halloween gala in the memory of her late brother and wife who were tragically killed in a motor vehicle accident in India in 1998. The proceeds of this evening will be used to help orphans and seniors who are homeless in the Tamil Nadu, India. Unfortunately, due to prior commitments, I am not able to attend this first... Well, I don't think this is the first one, is it? No. Oh. This opportunity to thank you for your generosity. You are helping to make a big difference in the lives of those uh, of these people that are vulnerable, children and seniors. Together, we make a difference. As mayor, I'm proud of your efforts, and I'm very pleased to extend my best wishes for everybody in, uh, attending tonight and enjoy the evening. Yours sincerely, Frank Scarpetti, Mayor. Of Scarpetti. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Quickly, um, later on, at the end of the night, there will be a, a judging of people who have come in costumes. 
Thank you to each and every one of you for coming today. This is the first official event for the Ricky Wish Foundation, and I really thank you for your support. Once again, I'd like to recognize and welcome our dignitaries. Uh, Mr. The Honorable Peter Kent was here, but he had to leave, so that was very nice of him to come and make an appearance to give me some support. I'd like to recognize Regional Councilor Gordon Landon, Regional Councilor Jolie, Councilor Logan Ganapathy, Andy Taylor, CAO from Markham, um, Town of Markham, and uh, our very special guest, uh, the Member of Parliament, Mr. Joe Dania, and our Superintendent of Police, my good friend, Mr. Robertson Rose, thank you very much for coming. I also want to thank my friend from the town of Marka, my colleagues, Anna and Miriam, for coming today. Thank you very much. Our sponsors, Lynn and Krish Panwani, thank you. Patrick O'Hanlon is not here, but he wishes me well. And my volunteers, I've got lots of volunteers who helped me today. My family and my friends, the board members for the Ricky Wish Foundation, Carl, who entertained us today, and uh, Austin John, our DJ, thank you very much, Austin. Ingrid Panwani, our photographer today, is doing such a great job. And my friend Joseph Lau, who has always covered my events, both socially and politically. And Daniel and the children from the Cabbage Town Youth Choir, thank you. The staff of the Holiday Inn that did a terrific job in spite of the, the little glitch uh, uh, that we have getting into the hotel. There's a short start today, but they're doing an amazing job. And to all our donors and our MC, my dear friend Cedric D'Souza, thank you so much. This room is filled with amazing people today. A lot of volunteers work for different charities. I'd like to recognize some of them. Lynn Padwani helps a lot of charities in, in Canada, as well as in Calcutta. Please stand up, Lynn, let them know who you are. Colin Gray, uh, also a board member, a Rotary from the Rotary Club of Lakeshore, Burlington, who brings in thousands of dollars for that club. Tammy Ma, who has had many children through her charities. Tammy, thank you. And there's Nirmala Armstrong, who's very uh, active in the community, also Rotarian for the Markham Unionville Rotary Club. Her husband, uh, Tim Armstrong from the Lions Club. And there's Carol Armstrong from Granny's Pantry, who helps hundreds of poor families in Scarborough, Blue River. And there's one person that I must all thank the most is Dorothy Tam, who was an inspiration to me. She helped raise thousands of dollars for the Christian Children's Fund of Canada and made me part of that organization. Thank you, Dorothy. I'm sure there are many more in this room who have been an inspiration to many. Please give a big hand for all the leaders of our community for making a significant difference. Today is also very exciting because it's the first fundraising event for the Ricky Wish Foundation. It is also very emotional to please speak about the passing of my brother Ricky and his wife Rosie since the accident 13 years ago. I'm also very happy that my mother Irene Gaudiot is here with us. It is all the more special because her son, Ricardo Paul Gallio, was the youngest of nine siblings, her children, and me being the second last. She will be 87 this December, and I wish I looked like her if I was lucky enough to reach even 80. I want to talk a little about Ricky's life and why I am determined to keep his memory alive. Ricardo. Ricky, for short, was the youngest brother of nine siblings and three years younger to me. For those who did not know him, he was the most kind and generous human being 
who never hesitated to share whatever he had with those around him. Both Ricky and his wife were humble, loved to help the local church, volunteered for many community events, and spent a lot of time in while some of us were trying to be rich and successful, he was busy helping the poor. Though he was our youngest, he was the guy that most relied on in his family. He had many friends, and today we are so happy to have Harish, one of his good friends, to be part of this event. I met Harish by chance in Canada because he noticed my election signs in Scarborough this May while he was driving and made a call to see if I was the sister of Ricky. And I was so happy because now he is part of, uh, he was part of Ricky's life while he was growing up in India. And I really thank Harish for coming today. Thank you, Harish. Both Ricky and his wife, Rosie, lived in Madras, India. Had two kids, Nikita and Gavin, and like most, dreamt of giving their children the best. He left Canada. Therefore, in 94, I filed an application for his family for permanent residence. In 97, he visited Canada to see the business I had started for him and to learn more about Canada before he immigrated. After six months, he couldn't wait to join his wife and kids back in India to spend their last Christmas together before they made Canada their home. Unfortunately, that was the last when I saw him in 97. The passing of Ricky was painful and more so to the way he and his wife died and how little dignity was given to them in the local hospital in Tamil Nadu, India. Thirteen years ago, if someone was in an accident in India, especially in Tamil Nadu, they were taken to the nearest government hospital and if their identity was unknown, they will not be treated immediately, and like most citizens in India, they are sometimes left on the floor without a bed, with no immediate medical care. Unlike Canada, mo most people in India don't travel with identification, like a driver's license, for example. Therefore, when there's an emergency, the families are not notified and will never know until it was too late that their loved one was in an accident and admitted to an hospital or even passed away. This was exactly what happened to my brother and his wife and the horrifying experience that my family had to face at the time will never be forgotten. Their dreams were shattered on that horrible day and they left behind their two children whom I adopted. I was going to give you a detailed account of the accident and the carelessness of some hospitals in India. But after my interview with a local newspaper in Thornhill last week, where I revealed exactly what happened for the first time in 13 years, it brought back all those haunting memories that were so painful. And it was the first time Ricky and Rosie's kids got to hear the way their parents passed away. Therefore, today I want to talk about how we move, have moved forward and how the Ricky Wish Foundation will not only keep my brother's memory alive, but it will help orphans, homeless seniors, and abused women and children. Since the accident, I have pressured the Tamil Nadu government about their laws in local government hospitals and how they have to attend to any accident victim immediately, regardless of their identification or status. And I'm happy to say that after 13 years, anyone admitted to a government hospital will be treated immediately and most of all treated as a human being. My fight never gave up. I continued to visit Tamil Nadu over a dozen times and I spent thousands of dollars to sue the insurance company for the truck that was involved in this accident and after 13 years, this August, I was able to get a small compensation for the courts brought for their children. My friends, we should realize how lucky we are to live in a country like Canada. We are treated with respect and dignity. Our medical system is unmatched and we should be so grateful. 
Starting a foundation in memory of my brother was the right thing to do. It puts back the dignity he deserved. Like Nikita and Gavin, there are thousands of children that are affected by tragedy and not many have family members or friends to assist them and unfortunately, most are left on their own to fend for themselves. We in Canada have opportunities to succeed and get wealthy. It's not wrong to enjoy the sweat of our labor and indulge in things that fancy us because we have earned it. But at the same time, take a look at the ones that are not as fortunate. There are hundreds of orphans that are left at the mercy of others. Some seniors are abandoned and left homeless. There are many lonely people that don't have anyone to share a conversation with. There are displaced families affected by wars and natural disasters, and many women and children are abused every day and sometimes have no shelter. These people are not as lucky as you and me. Coming to Canada over 24 years ago, I couldn't have imagined that I would be at home represent as a council on the Immigration and Refugee Board, take up politics, contest for the federal elections, or to visit Sri Lanka as a goodwill ambassador. But guess what, I did it. I told myself that we have many opportunities right in front of us and we have to do something. It's not wrong to request the help of our influential friends sometimes to help make a difference in this world. The passing of my brother gave a different perspective in, life, in my life. I wanted to do something, and therefore, I got involved in Rotary, volunteered for many charitable foundations, traveled to many countries, and assisted in my little way. I try not to trip about petty things. My brother and his wife lost their lives at such a young age, at 33. We never could tell what tomorrow has in store for us. My friends, life has so much to offer, but it's short. Therefore, we need to seize every moment and take advantage of opportunities that come our way because we are going to leave this world and we have no choice but to leave everything behind us. Most of us take this gift of life for granted. I hope that we live life to its fullest and share a little of what we have for others because there are many that need just a little help. And if we could come together and give each other a helping hand, then we could make the world a better place. The proceeds of today's event will go to the orphans and homeless seniors in India and the Yellow Brick House in Richmond Hill because they all mean a lot to me. I will have the opportunity to meet the children and seniors personally that will benefit from this charity. And if you want to get involved, please call me and join me on this journey. You can visit us on our website at thebrickywishfoundation.ca and follow us and follow all our events and how you could donate and make a difference. Sorry I sound like a preacher. I just wanted to share my experience to the world. Thank you very much. I hope you'll enjoy this evening and I really appreciate every single one of y'all that I've attended today.
Jeremy Plaza. Sean. Paul. Lizzie. I'm pleased to be here at the Ricky Wish Foundation event. Uh, it's, it's quite exciting, actually. Uh, some of the money is going to support orphans overseas, and uh, I'm really supportive of Marlene Galliott's work in this area, and I congratulate her and everybody attending tonight. It's really quite exciting. I'm here to support Marlene and, and the cause she has for uh, restoring dignity for her brother. He had a horrific death and uh, she wants to get him where there's peace of mind and uh, uh, sh show the, how they, much they appreciate him. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Joe Daniel. I'm the Member of Parliament for Don Valley East and I'm delighted to be here at the Ricky Wicks Foundation uh, that will help many people and this charity that's raising uh, funds. And I congratulate uh, Marilyn Gallo for organizing this and uh, look forward to continuing to work with this charity to help them build uh, Canada as a better place. Thank you. Well, I come here to support the uh, Ricky Wish Foundation. It's a good charity organization. Uh, and I'd like to lend my support. You know, I know especially the organizer Marlene very well. I came last year and so I'm back again this year. I wish her all the best in the endeavor for this fundraising tonight. Thank you. Yeah. It's uh, Coke, 7-Up, and Reggie <laughs> 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 